Hello everybody, today we're going to go over how to beat Act 2 Resentment. This, These ideas should stay fairly the same, even through a lot of patches. As we get more heroes, the the fundamentals stay the same, but obviously the party comps could change. But other than that, unless they drastically overhaul the main boss, this should work pretty much all the time for you. As in the first Darkest Dungeon, most importantly, your intro composition is going to determine your overall success. So this is the current DOT comp, False Shine. Um... We're obviously going to do Searing Strike. We're going to do Retribution to keep off tokens and blinds. We're going to do eventually Slice Off, because if you upgrade that, it gives a vulnerability token. Just adds a little extra damage where you can. Then obviously we're going to go into Noxious Blast. Once that's upgraded, it does 6. So you're going to be doing about, on average, maybe 10 to 12 DOT per turn. So it should be about 50 damage a turn, because it takes so many actions. And then with the Retribution, especially if you get Bulwark, you should be probably adding in anywhere between 10 and 20 uh, repose damage. You should probably burn out the boss in 5 to 6 turns. Works very well. The other iteration you can do, I always keep the Plague Doctor Jester. Um, I think they're too strong of a combo. You could do Grave Robber. I don't think it's as good, but you could get a couple of criticals with her uh, upgraded skills because they add such a high crit chance. So that's something to consider, but for the most part, I think these two are vital, and then this is where you can kind of do this comp you see me do. If you have a Ravager, Hellion, um, obviously Hellion's End's really good, toe-to-toe -to -toe will take that um, off the exhaustion once you're upgraded. Double Cross on the Howie Man, once I find it, Double Cross upgraded, does two vulnerability tokens and gives himself some protection, which is really nice. And then essentially all you do is keep up the... Vulnerability tokens so the Hellion can always maximize and then obviously the Plague Doctor can either heal or do Noxious Blast or remove the negative tokens as need be and heal. I try to stay away from healing all the time because it's certainly, uh, the boss does way too much damage in the late game to try to heal through it so we don't really care. So that's both party comps. You could do a Leper... You could do something like this. It's just the Leper right now needs a little bit more upgrades you could go in medicinal bandages and stuff so you could do a leper instead of a hellion but uh, you definitely need the vulnerability tokens if you're going to do the pure damage so you can't get rid of the highwayman so that's my preferred but this could work as well some good trinkets and stuff but we're going to stick with the dot comp for now and now we're going to talk about skills i'm not going to go into every single skill because in all honesty you only need a few because the boss isn't exactly oh well i need to get rid of that when i start um, so Searing Strike, you're also going to upgrade that. That's all you're going to do. You're just going to constantly do damage. Um, for the Mana Arms, you're pretty much going to do just Retribution the whole time. The Jester, you're pretty much just going to do Slice Off the whole time. And then that. I mean, there's really not too many other. Maybe you Encore for some reason, but probably not. You may Crush once you get near the end, but once you get into the upgraded forms of these skills, you're probably not really going to deviate. You may have to Cauterize to heal somebody, but for the most part, you're just going to Noxious Blast, and you're going to stick through your skills there. So the skills on the damage comp, it's going to be pretty much Howling's End, toe-to-toe. -to -toe. You're going to dance back and forth between those two skills. Highwayman, it's always going to be Double Cross. Um, maybe you take aim once. I don't know why you would. Maybe if you had the um, Librarian Trinket, you want to uh, get yourself some crit tokens so you can get the Double Cross off. But other than that, you'd bounce, before, uh, bounce between those two skills. Jester, like I said, still slice off, maybe an encore, maybe an inspiring tune if you're near a meltdown, but probably not. And then once again, the Plague Doctor, same thing, Noxious Blast into either Indiscriminate Science or obviously Battlefield Medicine. So those are the skills you're going to upgrade. For the most point, you need between 12 and 16 Mastery Tokens. Alrighty, now that we've gone over comps, skills, we need to talk about boss trinkets. Really, the best boss trinkets are going to be the Dreaming Generals one, where your party can't shuffle. That's really good. The other boss trinket you're really going to want is probably the Librarian 5 Crit Burn. Um, there is one on the Leviathan, I believe, that reduces Torch Drain. That's always good for trinkets that obviously rely on the Torch. And also, higher Torch gives you better benefits. So, keeping the Torch higher, more damage, and not having your party move is really good. There's about the only boss trinkets. They're not crucial, but obviously we're going to try to optimize our run. So I would say Dreaming Generals first, because if one of your damage dealers gets shuffled, you're going to spend turns unshuffling. Um, 
Librarians second, and then we'll take the Leviathans third. Normally the Harvest Child's 50% HP would be bonkers, but this fact that the boss is probably going to give you a meltdown or two, it's probably not going to matter and also it's going to be doing 28-30 damage near the end, because we're going to talk about how to beat the Seething Psy, so we're not going to... We're not going to rely on HP. I'm not going to go into the areas too terribly much, but I would avoid the Shroud until at least the 3rd or 4th League. The area is just really hard right now, and you definitely need a lot of mastery and great tokens. Um, trinkets, sorry, not tokens. So I'd avoid the Shroud early on. Probably going to really kick your teeth in and set you up for a bad run, but definitely do it near the end game. That's my only advice for regions. Obviously try to get as many mastery tokens as possible if there's a doable quest in that region. So let's talk generically trinkets overall. Pretty much you're going to do the DOT comp. Obviously Blight Chance on the Plague Doctor is uh, crucial. HP increasing trinkets, also not bad. I know I just said don't worry about it too much, but even a little more HP will keep you off death store through the physical damage. Um, anything with obviously speed, damage, HP, anything that gives you an extra action on the Hellion is going to be really good actually. Because she obviously gets three focus her abilities. So there is a trinket that gives 33% extra actions one hit. It can go on anybody. You put that on the Hellion and then just give her a generic damage trinket. Really good. Howie Man. Um, he has his own trinket that does... No, it's the Mana Arms. Mana Arms has a trinket that does that as well. But yeah, other than that, honestly, you just need to worry about Blight Chance and damage. It's pretty generic. So obviously, if you have the Runaway without Artisanist, you want to get Burn Chance. I don't know if I would do, you could maybe put a bleed on the Jester, but just play around with it. The trinkets are pretty important, but damage and DOT are obviously take front. Any increasing HP on the side or extra turns is obviously really good as well. And finally, I will get some actual gameplay near the end here and talk over it, but... So, generic items for the Occultist Encounters before the boss and items for the boss. So for the boss, the Seething side itself, for items, you're going to want some actual HP heal just to keep you off death door a little longer. You're going to want single target DOT, probably just one. You don't want to give everyone one because if they fail, then you're out of items. You're definitely going to want at least four milk soaked bandages and put it on your best damage dealer. Don't put it on somebody else because you don't know when the blinds are going to come in. So, for example, you're going to use the Hellion. Make sure she has the milk soaked bandages so she can always hit her toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe or howling's end. So... Make sure she has milk soak bandages. And that's about it. Um, DOT, healing, and curing negative. You could do maybe stimulants. This horn that gives you uh, plus two damage to each person. But for the most part, I prefer those trinkets to be used for the actual cultist encounters. So now we're going to talk about the cultist encounters. So Cultist Encounters, I tend to like having the um, AoE abilities because what that does is it gets rid of the evasion of the tiny little Cultist dudes in the back and you really want to kill them off quick. It also obviously does damage to everybody. The Shuffle Grenades are really good. It can bring the little guys forward so they're not using utility skills. Anything like Stimulants is great. The Horn is great. Using Laudanum to cure stress. You don't walk in with too much stress is great. So pretty much you want to kill the Cultists as fast as possible while also keeping your stress lower. Obviously, you always want to try to keep, keep HP up, but that can be a little difficult at moments, but definitely burst through those guys as quick as possible. So getting rid of evasions with AoEs, giving 50% damage bonuses to chunk down the big guys quicker, and the shuffling the enemy party can allow the back row guys not to use uh, some of their better abilities. So that's really how you handle the cultists. You just chuck a whole bunch of items at them and try to burst down the support characters as quick as possible. Um, as I said, we would get to the boss. Here we are, we're doing the D.O.T. comp. The special things we have with these individuals, as it was in the first part of the video, we have Soloist, which honestly doesn't really come into play too much. The minus HP might have actually been worse, but the crit chance on bleed is pretty good. We have Arsonist on the Runaway, which is good, and then we have Bulwark on the Man of Arms, which is actually the main thing you want. Bulwark's going to do the most damage, as you see here, especially all these damage increasing trinkets as well. I'm going to be skipping around this fight. So this is obviously the DOT comp. What you want to do is never obviously focus any of the lungs. You're going to rely on the shallow breaths. And ever since the patch where they made deep breath less reliable and go activate l longer into the fight, lower HP, there we go. 
you can actually get away with a lot of shallow breaths. As you can see, it only does six to seven damage, one stress. So in all honesty, shallow breaths for about the first four or five times doesn't really matter. You're going to get hit by at least a deep breath or two. So you're still going to want decent death door protection, which is why I did recommend that you don't really get anything that decreases. And if you get items, obviously, if you get items that increase death door's resistance, it's really good. So for the actual boss itself, the DOT comp, it's... <laughs> It doesn't take a lot of narration. It's literally Noxious Blast, Searing Strike, Bulwark, and then Slice Off. And you'll just watch me uh, just pretty much rinse that the whole time. So, as you can see, 25% crit chance is really good because of the Soloist class, but he also only has like 30 HP because of it. So, obviously, that's a trade off. But as you can see right here, I believe this is where I did my. No, okay, I might have missed it already. I did a 32 crit on a repost earlier. And um, that obviously. Yeah, I think it's coming up right here. So I'll, I'll show this. I might talk through it. But all you do is stack the DOT. And I'll show you the situational things. Nah, okay. I'll show you the situational things of when do you want to heal? When do you want to stress heal? Uh, when do you not go into combat? Because honestly, that's the only variation you got to learn how to do is when to not do damage. In all honesty, that's why you bring in items that heal. And your hero still does damage. So you'll notice I have two 50% healing items on and I have a triage kit. You'll see the triage kit get used here soon on the Plague Doctor. Um, I'm not going to quite use... I, I might use one of the... Yeah, so fortunate critical, but it didn't really matter. Once again, just slice off. And that's normal damage, normal bleed. It's not like I'm getting crits the whole time. Mana Arm's always going to get focused, which is really nice because he had low HP. Then obviously you can do some nice damage back with Bulwark. We do have... I do recommend the Holy Waters, whatever they're called, that remove negative tokens. Because obviously only Milk Soaked, dam milk -soaked Bandages will only remove the blinds. But we'll obviously get rid of that uh, weak damage as well with the other item. So we obviously... That's why we bring in remove negative item ones. So we are going to use the Triage Kit to critically strike. Uh, indiscriminate science would have also done it, but it wouldn't have been damaged and would have gotten reverse post. So obviously the triage kit gets get some full HP, and we still keep to get repost and all that, which is huge. And then guess what? We go right back to Noxious Blast. So that's what I'm saying. You really don't have to actually think <laughs> too terribly hard when you get here. So we do get to the miss, and this will be the last shallow breath. Now he's at the HP where it's going to be deep breath the whole time, pretty much should be deep breath yeah um he only has 100 hp left which is a decent amount but when you figure the mana arms can do about 20 to 30 on repost it's really good right there we get rid of the blind and the uh damage reduction now we got two attacks in there we always have our searing strike so we'll do that that's another four damage another three damage fire as you can see we're doing 18 damage per tick and that's before we get another slice off on there another noxious blast on there the Plague Doctor does have a Blight Increasing skill chance. I know it misses there, but that's the first time it resisted. I do give the Arsonist that. Um, not the Arsonist. Well, she is Arsonist class. But I do give the Runaway that because I don't want her to get focused by... I guess I didn't have to because she wasn't going to hit by these next two abilities. But I didn't want her to go to Death's Door right away. But obviously you're going to see this Deep Breath crush me. 21 because of the Vulnerability token. All that other damage. We have a very strong chance of sending him to Death's Door here. 9, not quite Death's Door, but obviously the DOT will take him over. And now you're about to watch me get utterly wrecked. Right. So that's what I'm saying with the deep breath changes. This is why focusing the body is even easier. Because this used to happen way more. And you actually used to get hit by probably 3 to 4 deep breaths. And you never had anyone uh, off of Death's Door. But now that deep breath only happens at a certain limit. It's so easy. So you'll see me here just... I forget what I do. I think I just, yeah. So I send it to Death's Door. The Arsonist, run away. Gets a chance to try to kill, and I think I do. But even if I didn't, I would have had a DOT tick. It wouldn't have been AoE. I would have had the Plague Doctor and the Jester go. And that's all you do. So when you heal, you really only heal in the very beginning when you're not getting chronically deep breath. Because you'll actually be able to keep your HP. Healing a lot when deep breath's active, unless it's like 80 HP, like on the Man Arms. It doesn't matter. You're going to be constantly on Death's Door. So, that's how you beat the final boss. Um, the melee strategy. I have other videos on my YouTube channel. Um, 
all you do is literally slice off Noxious Blast, double cross, and then the Hellion goes back and forth between Hellion Zen and uh, Toe to Toe. Same healing rules apply. Only heal during all the shallow breaths because you can actually keep people off death's door. Um, get rid of negative tokens. And then obviously once you get the deep breath, it's just a race to get through that last 100 HP. Thank you for watching. If you have any further comments on how to beat Act 2, let me know.